asking everyone to wear their favorite team gear. There will be a tailgate after service that day that will include food, cornhole, and a sweet and chili cook-off. If you would like to participate in this year's Super Bowl soup cook-off, please see Leslie Jackson before or after service. Or contact her via email at outreach at remedychurchnc.org. Be prepared to bring cash that day and vote for your favorite soup. Each vote costs only one dollar, and all money raised at this event will go towards our Christmas giveaway. Better to give for this year. On January 28th, we will receive an offering for our youth. The money will go towards helping to pay for their trip at an annual conference in Chabot in Pigeon Forge. Please come prepared to give this day and invest in our students' spiritual lives. Participate in giving at Remedy. We have several ways to do so. Just drop your tithing envelope, fill that completely into the black boxes located in the sanctuary at the door as you enter the rear entrance. Or you can give online at our website at www.remedychurchnc.org slash online giving. Amen. Anybody ready to worship the Lord in this new year? Stand with us. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning for waking us up, even on this cold morning. Amen. Hallelujah. When I move my feet, when I move my mouth, then the 
Because God is worthy of praise. I, I mean, I don't think you quite understand what I'm saying. God is worthy of praise, whether you feel like it or whether you don't. So, hey, how about this? If you can't shout for yourself and you can't shout for your own blessing, I, I'm going to just share with you just a brief testimony of this young man right standing right behind me. This, this, this young, he's a, he's a fine, strapping young man. This young man got on the phone last night and... and he said something that was very, he texted my daughter and, and uh, said, tell him what you asked. Just tell him what you asked to be done. My man asked, he called on the phone. He said, listen, I, I, I want to be saved. And, and maybe that don't get to you. But see, so, so we began to lead him and begin to explain to him the goodness of God. And at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, this young man right here accepted Jesus Christ as a Savior. So, hey, so let me tell you what I'm doing. This might not make sense to you, but the angels in heaven is rejoicing. If you don't have your about if you are a true Christian, and you truly have Jesus in your heart, and when the word comes home, when one gets that's a shadow on the inside. So listen, so from now on, when Anthony begins to move his body, when he begins to move his feet, when he opens his mouth, guess what? Every darkness has got to flee. You have the same power of Jesus on the inside of you. So check this out. Yeah, I'm 
Will I not open up you and pour into you more than you're able to have and receive? Listen, I, I'm not going to, I got about two more minutes and I'm through. God gave me a word. He gave me a, a, a prophetic word. And I'm going to speak what he says to me. He's been stirring in my spirit. He's been speaking to me. And he said, I'm sending the fire. He said, I'm sending the fire. And, and it's not just for this local body. It is for the body. He is sending the fire. But God gave me an illustration. He showed me somebody with a catcher's mitt and a baseball. And he was throwing it. And he says, if you're not ready to catch it, you're going to miss it. Hey, I don't know about you, Brother Dunn, but I'm so sick and tired. I, I, I'm tired. I'm tired of coming to church week in and week out. I'm tired. I don't know about you, church, but I'm tired. I'm so tired because I don't know about what you desire, but I desire Jesus more than everything inside of me. If I lose my home, if I lose my family, if I lose my children, I can't lose Jesus. I remember what happened to me when I got saved. I was dying on my way to a devil's hell, but there was one name that I called on, and his name was Jesus. When I called Jesus, everything stopped. I had fell in love with the Savior, and God told me to tell you this morning. He said, Brother Wesley, women in church, Maven Parker, Anthony, I'm sending the fire. I'm sending it. And he's told it to me twice. He's already confirmed it. He's sending the fire, Jesse. But if we come to church time and time again, and we come in the same, and we work out the same, then nothing's changed. So God, all right, this is what I want you to do, and then I'm out of your way. I want everybody to open up your hands like this. Open up and lift up your hands to Jesus in a receiving type manner. Some of you are going to get it, and some of you are not. Because your heart's not right. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm the son of my voice. Those that hearts are not ready to receive. I pray every demonic stronghold, every hindrance, every bondage is broken today. And God, these are your people. God, I pray right now that the good Holy Ghost, just like it was on the day of Pentecost, would flood in here like a mighty rushing wind, and flames of fire will set upon each of these that are ready to receive God. We give you glory. This is your house. This is your service. And we give you praise. What a promised You have brought me to such freedom. I have found in you your the healer who makes all things new.
God, how we feel at the moment. We're commanded to give Him praise no matter what we feel like because feelings come and go. Amen? But God is here always. He's always there, even though we don't feel like He's there maybe sometimes. He's always there. Oh, 
I want you to come and find a place in these altars. you got something, right? I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be nervous, but I want you to come and find a place right now. Jesus wants to do something in your life today. And you can have the same kind of year you've been having. Thank you, sister. I need some people to come help pray. Is there anyone else today? If you say this year is not going to be last year. This day is not going to be the rest of my days. This, this season is not going to be my last season. This time is not going to be my last time. This is my moment. This moment, look, Christianity is not something you wear. We got T-shirts all over the place today. But following Jesus, is trusting Jesus enough to say, you know what? With reckless abandon, I want to forget everything that's holding me back right now, and I'm going to step into purpose because God designed you for moments like this to experience the real love that He has for you. He designed you for this. I'm going to wait just another minute because I believe that there's somebody else in the house today that you're walking into 2018 with things that came on you in 2017 and you need an answer. You need a cure. You need a word. You need Him to touch you. Whatever it is, I'm going to wait just another moment and I want you to come if that's you. I don't want you to think about anybody or anything else. 
And I want you to seize this moment because this moment, this, this is what, not, not everybody gets this, but this moment could be the moment that changes your life. We've done church so many ways, so much, that people are either afraid of the altar or they're numb to it and they, they don't believe that it does anything for them anymore. But I promise you, that if you will take a chance and you will trust in Jesus in this moment, not what I'm saying, but what He's saying, if you'll take a chance in this moment, He will meet you here. And there is something that will change in you. So I want you to come. If this is your moment, if I'm talking to you, please don't wait. Please don't lose out on this moment. God is doing something. I want you guys to keep praying. And I want to pray for you right where you are. And if, this, if, if I'm talking to you, I want you to make your way down. This altar is open to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would move your, move your hand upon the hearts of your people this morning. God, move your hand over this congregation that whoever it may be, God, that whether it's one or a hundred this morning, you have taken the time in this service to speak and to speak so clearly that this could be the moment to transform somebody's life. But today, I pray that somebody would know how just how much you love them. That somebody would know just what you have done for them. That somebody would know that in the middle of their mess and in the middle of their chaos, God, that your love for them is supreme. It's the past is that, God. It goes above. It goes beyond that. And so, Father, this morning, help them to experience your love. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we want to hurt you.
Would you lift your hands all across the room today? Father, we worship you. Father, we recognize the Spirit in this place, Jesus. Oh, God, we give you glory. Oh, God, we give you glory. We sing with the heavenly host. There's no other name. There's no other name I know. Sing it. Or would you just make that your heart's cry today? A recognition of who He is and what He has done for you. Come on, He desires your worship. He desires your honor this morning. But most of all, He desires you. Would you give it all to Him today? Would you hand it all to Him today? seated for just a minute. So you're praying, keep praying. But I think this is the perfect picture for what Vision Sunday needs to look like. I had an agenda coming in here, but I told you six months ago we were going to follow the cloud when the cloud shows up and the cloud is here, so we're just going to follow where he goes. Praise team, if you need to find a seat on the stage, find a seat on the stage, but don't go far because we're going to worship here in just a minute. But I need you to understand this today before we go. This thing that's tattooed on this shirt right here, this is what it's all about. If you can't read it, if you don't know it, it's experience, real love. The real love of Jesus, it looks like Jesus. It doesn't look like some picture that we paint of Jesus. It doesn't look like some list of do's and don'ts that we put up in the name of Jesus. It doesn't look like any kind of tradition or mindset or, 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 or any article of clothing. It doesn't look like any, any sort of right words, a Sunday school lesson or anything like that. What it looks like is me and you coming together. But when we need God to answer, and when we need to call on Him and hear His voice, that He comes down and we're believing together, and we are one with one another, that when we come together, we see heaven come down. That's what experiencing the real love of Jesus looks like. It's not that we come to church and we have a good time and we leave, and this sounds like a redundant message that I've been preaching for two years, but i just got to explain to you that this is the heartbeat of what it looks like to be a part of Liberty Church. And we ain't about anything but Jesus Christ and Him crucified and resurrected. Come on, somebody. 
We're not about anything but seeing God move in Concord, North Carolina. And once again, our sons and our daughters and our brothers and our sisters will come to know the name of Jesus in such a way that they look different, they act different, they speak different, they walk different. And it's not about anything but the fact that Jesus loved them enough. Look in their mess and say they're still worth it. That's what we're really talking about here is because people walk up in our churches all the time and they're looking for somebody to tell them, you're worth it. When 2,000 years ago, there was a man named Jesus who came to Calvary and he hung on a cross like a thief. When really, he didn't come to take anything, he came to give something. He didn't come to take anything, he came to give, give us everything. And he hung on that cross. And in the middle of that going on, he said a couple of words. And this is not, not in my notes, but the Spirit just spoke to me just a minute ago. But Jesus said something on the cross that I find very interesting. He so said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You walk in those doors on Sunday. You're greeted by a team of people that I told this morning that I tell every morning that I get a chance to that I don't want people coming in here and feeling like they don't know anybody. I want them coming in here and having an experience of realization. It's not that they're discovering something new. It's just that they're realizing they're somewhere that they always belonged. You all get that? It's not a new place. They're returning. You see, when we talk about God being a redeeming God, Redemption has to have a starting point that is lower than the place than the thing being redeemed goes to. You understand that? When you redeem something that has lost its value, it comes back into what it was always supposed to look like and be. You all understand that? We don't have people running around in Concord broken and messed up and participating in all kinds of things that God does does not, that it grieves his heart for. We don't have them running around because that's how they were created. No, they came into the world and they bought into the lie that they were less than God created them for. And I feel more now than ever that Remedy Church is a place where people need to experience the real love of Jesus because that real love, when they come in and experience that, that's like wiping the grime and the dust off of a shiny trophy that God is just waiting to put in his case and say, look at what I have done. Look at what I have made. Look, look, we, we, we want to talk about all these, all these other things, but the bottom line is that you are his most prized possession. I got seven pages of notes, and I ain't going to get nowhere near finishing it all of them. But what I want you to understand is that Jesus desires for you to be a part of this body. Not to come and sit on a chair and show up and people tell you how good it is to see you. And, and, and you, you feel great when you're here and you go home and you live a life that's burdened with depression and despair. No, he made you a part of this church. Because you were designed to do something significant in the kingdom. You are worth more than what your life has been. I don't know who I'm talking to today. You're worth more than what you've been. You are more than what you've been. There's a new season coming to somebody today. There's a new place coming to somebody today. Some of y'all, it, it may take a little while, but God is working on you and He is moving in you to where when you get to where you're going, you're going to do something significant for God. I just feel that in my spirit that somebody's about to rise up from the ashes in 2018. But somebody's about to rise up out of the ashes and take their place in the kingdom of God and do something phenomenal. I hear a call from the Lord to say, it says, stop being average. I called you to be phenomenal. Stop being willy-nilly. Stop being just everyday Joe Smo, average Joe, whatever it is you want to call it. I called you to be phenomenal. I called you to be the best of the best. I called you to be the very best you that you can be. And you can no longer sit back knowing what God's gifted you with and not use it for His glory. Today is the day that we experience the real love of Jesus. I got a little bit of time. If y'all will find a seat, because I want to go through some things really quick. They're like, we just stood up here for an extra five minutes for nothing. It's okay. You're not average. You're phenomenal. 
hang out with me. You hang out with me. You got to Here's, here's what I want to tell you today. And I, I want to get through some of this because I think it's really important heading into this year as we launch. I believe that God's got us in a new season. Do you believe that? Maybe it's just me. I believe that God's doing something special in this church. I believe that, and it's not about the church, it's about winning the lost people. It's about doing things for God and His kingdom so that it can expand and grow. And we can do something powerful, God, that when people walk into Concord, they're not looking at Concord. We're not on that list of the top ten most dangerous cities that is to live in North Carolina. We're not on that list of, of cities you don't want to live in. It's, a, it's not a place where, you know, there, there's, there's people who are wondering who they are and where they're going. I want people, when they walk into Concord, Concord, they hear the sound of Remedy Church when they cross the county and the, the city lines and they come in and they say there's something different about here. I want us to be a, such a powerful church that it changes the very atmosphere that when people are walking down the streets of downtown Concord, something hits them and they just don't even know what it is, but it's because we've laid a foundation that this is the kingdom of God and He reigns supreme. I want something to be changed. I want us to go into the areas where nobody else will go. I want us to be the people of God and do what we're called to do and not be another church that just sits on pews on Sunday morning and talks about how good God is and the only time we evangelize is when our friends come and they hear the preacher talk about it. Now, more than that, it's about people experiencing the real love of Jesus that when they walk in here or whether they don't or whether we meet them in the supermarket or on the street or wherever we are, that they experience the real love of Jesus because it's in us. Today's a very special Sunday. So I mean, I don't understand that. It's a very special Sunday. Look, I'm going to read for a minute, okay? Because I want you to, I want you to hear this. I want to talk to you about where we're headed at Remedy. Well, I came to this church almost two years ago. One of the very first questions I was asked is, "What's the vision that you have for our church?" And I was stunned. I said, "Y'all really don't have one." That sounds awful, don't it? I've just come to this place in my life that we built churches in a way that does not honor God and what He tries to do in His people. There's an expectation for the, the pastor to come in to a group of people he doesn't know, to a church he's never been to, to a place that, that is brand new to him. And the first question we ask is, what is your vision? Like, I'm Moses and I just come off the mountain. I'm not Moses. And so my answer was, well, I really don't have one. I just want to keep fulfilling the Great Commission. I just want to keep winning lost people. And I want you to know that all of 2016, we won lost people. All of 2017, we won lost people. There are were, there were things that we have done. And, and, and there's not been this big, big push or whatever for any sort of words or slogan or anything like that. And we're about to come out with one here in just a second. But I just, I just, I need us to get like, we're going to be different as a church. We've got to do something different so that the kingdom of God can move and grow like it hasn't grown in the last few years. So we've got to reach out to Concord in a different way. And so I, I didn't want to come in and, and just spout off a vision because I, I'll tell you right now, two years ago, I would have come in and said, oh, yeah, here's my vision. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do this, 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 and this. But because of what God's taken me through, I came in and the Spirit spoke to me in that moment that that question was asked to me. And I said, I don't know. I just don't know. And in April of this past year, in 2017, we began a journey with a resource that in one month of starting it, it pushed us to consider our mission and our vision statement. At the time, I had not heard many people talk about our vision or our mission. It wasn't something I felt was easily accessible. It wasn't understandable by somebody coming in. And in large part, the vision and the mission statement we had then, it wasn't informed by a clear cutout process for people when they come in. They understand, this is what I do. This is how I be a part of who Remedy Church is. And some of you will remember the slogan that was used, to reach out, restore, raise up. Anybody remember that? But we, we had, it had kind of gotten dull at that point. It had kind of got to, and I don't mean that ugly or mean. I just mean that it wasn't something that was at the forefront of, of our minds at that point that we were talking about, that we were sharing with other people. And I've concluded at this point, pastor in this church, it's a lot of pressure for the pastor to come into a church. It takes time for that pastor to get to know that church on a deeper level, have a clear-cut vision for the church. I told you I was asked what my vision was, and my only response was just to win the loss 
as Jesus and continue to fulfill the Great Commission. And here's where I, I want to tell you where I'm at on vision at this point. I truly believe that the vision of this church must be a shared vision. That it's not Pastor Cody that's going to bring to pass what God wants to do in Concord. It's going to take every person sitting in this sanctuary today. It's going to take every single person to do that. And I, and I believe that God has a heartbeat in every church. And I believe your heartbeat was here long before I came. You just needed somebody to come along and, take, and, and help you decipher what that heartbeat was. So we got together and we started talking. We talked about what was important. A core group of us, if you wasn't there, sorry, you just missed it. <laughs> I can laugh this morning, so I ain't being mean. But a core group of us got together and we talked about what was important in this church. What what is it that drives us? What is it that motivates us? And I, and I took those things back and I prayed over them. I said, God, what is it that you're speaking? What is it that you're saying about our church? Who are we? And who and, and who are we to the world around us? And three words came out in my spirit: experience, real love. Because one thing that we said was we love when we come together on Sundays. You guys love being together on Sundays. You love being together, doing things together, and, and loving on each other, and, and having a great time, and doing all the things that we do. And the second thing that I heard was we're a real church. We're okay with the fact that we're not perfect. We're okay with the fact that we don't have it all together, and we might walk in somebody, someday and somebody's having a bad day and somebody else is, and it might look like fireworks for a minute, but at the end of the day before we leave, we tell each other we love each other, and we hug each other, and we go home. Now, that, not, that, that kind of church isn't for everybody, but I'm just going to tell you, everybody has those moments, and if they want to, they can go over to a church where everybody projects an image that everything is okay and everything's perfect all the time, but I want anybody and everybody that walks in here to know that whatever you're dealing with, you don't have to mask it, and you don't have to hide it, that when you come in here, you are more than what you've been in the last however long you've been being. That you can walk in here, and you can be made new, and you can be made fresh. And we're not scared of your issue. If Jesus was not scared of your issue, I have no right to be. He's holy, way holier than I'll ever be. Right? So here's why we do that, though. It's because it's God loves us, and God loves people. We want people to experience the real love of Jesus because He loves us, and He is love. John 1, 1 John 4, 8 says that God is love. And he loves people. He loves me and you, and he loves everybody in the world. And we also do it because we're re representatives of God in the world. We truly believe that what we have to offer as a church and as individuals is the most valuable thing in the world. I truly believe that what I have on the inside of me is the most valuable thing that I could ever give to anybody. Because guess what? I've given people money, and their problems didn't go away. I've given people all kinds of stuff, and their issue didn't change. But I've watched people that when they say, like Anthony over here, who said, I want to know Jesus, that when Jesus comes into their heart, they start having a life that is completely transformed and changed by that love of Jesus. That their issue doesn't seem to be an issue anymore, and Jesus has come into their life, and He has changed their perspective, He has changed their DNA, He has changed who they are. And so I believe with all of my heart that there is nothing more valuable than the very love of Jesus that I have experienced in my own life that I can give to somebody else. Do you believe that? That's the most valuable thing. The last thing, why we do this, this is the last why, is because people don't have to spend eternity in hell. People don't have to. And you are the key to seeing that happen. We do what we do as a church because there is a heaven and there is a hell. And there's a lot of people out there that are completely unaware of that fact or are denying that fact. And you're the only thing that's keeping them from walking right into a hell that Jesus never intended for them to go into. That's the why. That's why we're doing it. So, so Pastor, how are we going to do that? I'm, I'm trying to rush. I know. When 12 o'clock's getting close, I know that chicken's going to start getting cold on the buffet. So I'm trying to hurry. So, Pastor, you said that you said that we we have this vision of what we want to do. We want people to experience the real love of Jesus. What does that look like? Let me tell you a little bit about our process moving forward. It's not just a slogan. 
There's a few words that sound cool, and it's not a T-shirt that we wear. It's not any of the, this phrase does two things. It describes who we are. We're people that have experienced the real love of Jesus, but it's also the process that you go through to become a follower of Christ. Number one, you experience. We want you to come and experience a worship service with us. If this is your first time today with us, I just want to appreciate. Can we just give any visitors that we have any hand clap, a hand clap today? Because we appreciate you being here. You are why we are here. It's because God has called us to be a people that loves on the world around us enough that they come to know Him in a real and authentic way. So we want you to experience. We want you to have an experience every single week, whether you're new or whether you're old. And I don't mean age. So y'all, old, if you're old, I almost said y'all old people, but y'all don't know who I'm talking about. If, I said, if you're old, I ain't talking about old and young. What I'm talking about is if you've been here or whether it's your first time every week, we want you to have an experience in God that will change you and transform your life so that when you go out of here, you're different and you make a difference in the kingdom of God. And here's the cool thing. If you're if this is your first time, you're going to have an awesome experience, but you're going to leave with a pretty cool t-shirt too. Is that all right? We, we want to invest in you. We want to show you that you're important to us. That first experience, it's going to carry over. Sandra, can you wave your hand for me real quick? I know she wasn't expecting that. But Sandra has been administrating what we call our pastor's breakfast every week. I don't know if you know this, but every week we are now offering a free breakfast to anybody who is a first-time guest the previous Sunday. So if today is your first Sunday with us and you want free breakfast, I love free breakfast. I love bacon. I love all, I don't know, I'm, tr- I'm putting a lot. They're like, don't say that, Pastor, when you don't have bacon. But I love breakfast and I love free. How many of y'all like free? How many of you like breakfast? Okay, so if you bring somebody with you or if this is your first time today, understand and know that next week we have a breakfast for you. We want to tell you more about our church. That's what we do. That's what that's where, where you can get plugged in and, and get on board with what God's doing here and understand who we are and what experience real love means. So number two, you get real about life and faith. How many of you know that we're sick and tired of putting on masks when we come to church? I got about three people that are tired of putting on masks. Y'all, the rest of y'all, keep your masks on, and y'all be this, this half will be real, this half will be fake. Is that all right? No, we want to be real about life and faith, right? I want to be real about my faith with Jesus, and so here's what we've got: we're working on, we're working on a program called Live Free. Okay, let me tell you a bit, a little bit about this. Because we want to be very purposeful and aware about being a church that's real. We don't want to play games here. We understand we're not perfect. We want every person walking through the door to know that it's okay to be human. That God created you, created you as a human, but God does not want you to stay where you are spiritually. So here's what we're doing. We're very soon going to offer a program called Live Free. This is a class that's designed to help you to understand what it means to live a life of freedom in Christ. I'm not about teaching people to cope with the things that are wrong in their lives. I'm about teaching people what the Word says, and what the Word says is that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Can I get an amen, somebody? You don't have to walk through life feeling like you've got a hindrance and you can't really live out the life that God wanted you to. And so what we're doing is we're creating a program called Live Free that you can step into that class one way and you can come out another and you can lift up your hands and you can say, you know what? I know what it means finally to be free in Christ. That's what it's about. And it might be a program, might be something we're promoting. But the real deal is... We're after spiritual results. We're after seeing people really live out what it means to be Jesus to the world. And that's what Live Free is all about. We'll have more on that as the year goes on. Okay, we don't have that fully in place yet, but we're going to have a class called Live Free. And if you've ever, look, every person needs to go through this class. Every single one. If you're under the sound of my voice this morning, look, there's something in your life that you need freedom from. There is something that you're hiding that you don't even know that you're hiding. And so this class is going to help you to understand what that is. It's going to help you understand who you really are. And it'll help you understand how to be that person. Okay? So live free. We offer connect groups. How many of you are in a connect group currently? Okay? We got we got some hands. Oh, somebody's just, some people are just like this. Y'all ashamed of your connect group? Come on now. So we, we currently have four groups. So we're going to be looking to expand that. We're going to try to add on a couple of groups here in the next couple of months. We're not splitting up current groups. Y'all don't get mad at me. But what we're doing, what we're doing, is we're expanding our groups because guess what? We've grown. 
It may not look, you can look around, this is not the biggest attendance we've had, but I can tell you one thing is that we, we have more people coming now and different people coming now than when I first got here. So in order to do that, that as we grow, we've got to be able to offer groups where people can connect in a very real way and find relationships that matter. Somebody say amen. Is that right? How many of you love your connect group? Come on, let's hear it for our connect group leaders and our connect groups. They're awesome things. Okay. They, they meet once per month. Okay. They meet once per month. So our connect groups meet once per month. They, they do anything from just fellowship, have a dinner, going on. I think some of them take the trip. Sister Jane takes the ladies on a beach trip every year, tries to. There are different things. So get connected to a connect group. And if you don't know how to get connected to a connect group, I'm going to point to Daniel. You can see Daniel right over there because yeah, he's got his hand waved. He's going to wave his hand again here in just a minute. But you experience God and a worship service with us. You get real about life and faith. And the last and most important thing that you do is you love when you've ever been to the church. You love God and you love people. Two things are incorporated into how we love, how we experience love and give love at Remedy. Number one, we're a passionate church about reaching and serving our community and our city for Jesus. Let me say that again. We are passionate about reaching and serving our community and our city for Jesus Christ. Let me say it again. We're passionate about reaching and serving our community and city for Jesus. Not for me, not for you, it's for Him. That's what it's all about. All right, we're passionate about it. We got that. I think y'all got it. We're passionate about serving our community and city for Christ. Let me, let me, let me tell you why I believe that about our church. During the holidays this past year, we, allow, we helped 18 families have a Thanksgiving dinner who didn't have Thanksgiving dinner this year. 18 families were impacted by your love. It gets better. During Christmas, we had a Christmas giveaway that we set out and set a vision for in January. Took up toys all year for, for, for this thing we call Better to Give because the, the Bible says that it's better to give than to receive, right? That's the heart here. So we took up toys all year. And we served over 70 kids Christmas that did not have Christmas in 2017. That's worth more than just a calm little hand clap. We, we loved on people, right? Praise God for the people who gave to that. Praise God for the people who worked that. Praise God for the people that came in here because I stood in the cafe and we prayed for a lady who broke down crying because she had nowhere to live and nowhere to go. And when she was done praying and crying, she said, y'all just don't understand what this means to me. Look, you've got to catch that vision and understand what it means to really love on people. Let me move on. So we're going to have every, every month we saw something special about that, right? So every month this year, we're going to have an opportunity every month for either you to invite people to come and experience something really cool that we're doing in service that day or after service, or we will have an outreach into our community. We want to be active this year. We want to do something awesome for Jesus this year. We want to go bigger and better for Jesus than we did in 2017 because now we've got a taste of what it means to really love on people, right? So we, we, we're going to have one thing every month, either to help out with reaching our city, our community, or actively inviting people that need the hope of Jesus to church on a special day. Do you understand that? You got that with me? Say amen. Amen. Okay. So we reach out to our city. We love on our city, and we love on our church. Number two, we love on our Number one, we love on our city. Number two, we love on our church. So we're going to have these outreach events. We're going to have these special services all, all the time. You know, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be great. There are places for you to plug in here at Remedy Church. How many of you how many of you know that just your smile might help somebody that goes to church here? That when you walk through those doors and you're the greeter, your smile might change their day. Because guess what? There's a family here that loves you and they need your love. So we have opportunities not only to serve our city, but we have an opportunity to serve our church. There are so many places. Don't feel like that we have everything covered because guess what? I run around like a chicken with my head cut off every Sunday. Head it us to all the other people, all the other volunteers. They're running around going, where do I go? What do I do? What do I need? How do I get it? Right? There's always a place for you here. Whether you're part of our First Impressions team, 
whether you're part of an altar team or a prayer team, that we're going to continue to set up a follow-up team. We need people to follow up with folks who are visiting for the first time or they're, they're guests with us for the very first time, and they need to know that we really care and that we noticed that they were there. So we're going to be setting up a follow-up team. There's, we've got children's classes in the back. How many of you know Remedy Kids is awesome? Sister Leslie, Sister Cindy, Sister Sandra, they're our teachers. They're great. We've got some awesome teenagers investing in our in our 6- to 12-year-olds. And Sister Kay and Brother Mickey and Sister Jane and all of them, the teenies class, let's hear it for them. The 3- to 5-year-olds, they do a wonderful job. And so, and Sister Teresa as well. There you go. Sorry. I started naming names and I shouldn't have done that. So, so we've got... Yeah, Nancy and, and Jess too. Sorry, guys. But um, we've got awesome kids' classes. So we've got a kids' team there you can be a part of. We got, how many of you know we got some teenagers in here? So crazy, frustrating, awesome teenagers here, and they need you to love on them. You can be a part of investing in teenagers, okay? So we've got a million places that you can plug in. So that's what it looks like. Experience real love. Come to a worship service. Learn about us. Get involved. Don't just sit on your hands in a in a chair every Sunday. Get involved and get plugged into what God has called you to do. That's what it looks like. And I want to tell you about a couple of people that are going to help you in that way. Number one, you need to understand that moving forward, Remedy is going to operate on teams. And I'm trying to hurry. We're going to be a church of teams. So everything we do, we have a worship team. We've got different people that do different, do different things. Heather's doing a lot right now, but we're going to keep developing that. We've got a first impressions team. Sister Nancy, you wave your hand. She's uh, the administrator of that, and she's uh, kind of plugging people in and, and scheduling people and helping work things out. We've got a, a whole team of people that do that. Okay, we've got uh, Brother Wayne. Can you wave your hand real quick? Brother Wayne is going to help us with our prayer ministry here at church. How many of you know prayer is important? Prayer is important. So as we move into 2018, we're going to try to establish more and more a spirit of prayer throughout our ministries and throughout everything that we do. Because prayer is the foundation for everything that we do here at Ruby Church, right? So we have t- different teams that you can you can get on. I, I want I want to introduce you. If you've not met Heather yet, Heather is our worship leader here. Surely you've noticed her in the last couple of months. Sister Heather Knight, she administrates and uh, oversees the, the worship ministry and uh, we'll say the fine arts too because that Christmas thing that y'all saw this year, that was real fine, wasn't it? Fine arts, yeah. She was uh, she kind of put that together, her and Brother Mike, her husband, you wave your hand, Mike. Uh, they, they helped put that together, took the charge on that. They did an awesome job with a talented group of people to put that together. Uh, Daniel, will you wave your hand one more time? This is Daniel Bryan. Even stand up for me, Daniel, so people can make sure they see your face because Daniel is going to be doing a couple of different things for us. If you get plugged into a team. Daniel's the man that you're going to be talking to some. He's going to help uh, manage volunteers in, in terms of uh, the calendar and all of that, making sure our administrators have what they need. He's also going to be helping a lot with pastor's breakfast and onboarding new people to come in and helping them to understand what it means to experience real love and be a part of Remedy Church, okay? He's, he's doing a lot, of, and he does a thousand other things, too, for me. Okay, so he's helping with that. And then I want to point to uh, Daryl Mullen. Daryl, will you wave your hand? He's, he's behind the camera back back there. But Daryl, in the past, has been a Connect Group leader. Uh, Daryl's going to kind of help with coordinating some things that we're doing with the Connect Groups moving forward. And uh, he's going to help to maintain the communication and stuff like that. If Connect Group leaders need anything, he's working with that. But he's also working extensively with the Live Free program. And he's really excited about that. If you want to know more about what the Live Free program is going to look like, you need to see Daryl after church or as soon as you possibly can because I'm telling you, spots are going to run out real quick, and, and it's going to be great. So Daryl's going to be doing those couple of things for us, and it's going to be awesome. Okay. So that was a lot packed into like 15 minutes. Okay. Hear this and know this. We're in a process. Just because this day is here and I'm telling you all these things, it doesn't mean everything's perfect. It doesn't mean everything is complete. It doesn't mean we've got everything under control. But understand this, just like you, our church is in a process. How many people in here are perfect? None of us are perfect. Here's the beautiful thing about church is that in the middle of us not being perfect and not having it all together all the time, God still chooses to, chooses to use us. Okay. In the middle of all that, in the middle of everything that we're doing, in the middle of all the process that, that we're in, if it's not perfect, if it's not all put together, I just have a trust that Jesus is going to work everything out. So 
There's no more pressure than there ever was. It's just that, and this is the key to everything, we all have to get on the same page. I want to share something very transparent with you before, as I'm kind of wrapping things up. When I got here, I felt like we were like this. Everybody was reaching a thousand different ways, trying to do a thousand different things, had their own ideas about everything. Would anybody agree with that? It felt kind of chaotic at times, right? Some of y'all are just like, I don't know, I don't know if I want to nod my head. Other people are like, yeah. But here's what I know. If we're going to do anything significant for the kingdom of God, we have to all be on the same page, all with the same heart, all with the same mindset. And it doesn't matter if you're seven years old or 70 years old. You need to love each other. The young and the old have to come together. The saint and the sinner have to come together. We've got to be a church that lets people belong as they become. They belong to a church while they become what God's calling them to be. And if we can come together, we will do something very powerful in this city that they've never seen before. Do you understand that? That, that if we can come together and we can be unified and we can be on the same page moving forward and we know, look, this is what I'm a part of, this is what we're doing, here's where we're going, and you get ready to run with this vision, I believe so long as there's somebody to run with it, God will take it, He will honor it and do something fantastic with it. Do you believe that this morning? Would you stand with me all over God's house? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what He's doing in church. I want you to grab your neighbor by the hand. I want you to pray for a couple of things with me this morning. I think it's really important for us to leave out of here on the same page doing what I believe that God wants us to do. I want us to pray for unity. I want us to pray for this vision that God would help us to grab a hold of it and run with it with everything that we are to pursue it with all that we are and say, God, I'm going to give you 100%. Remember, you were not created to be average. You were created to be phenomenal. And God needs that from you right now in the last hours of humanity. He needs that from you. So let's pray today for unity and pray that we can carry out the vision as He desires for us to. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you as your church. God, we, we just love you. God, we know that we're called to your purpose. We're called to your kingdom. And God, I, I pray that you would just help us, Father, to be of one mind and one accord. Lord, that there would be no bitterness, no malice, no hatred, no jealousy, no, no offense in this place, Lord. I pray that you would just bring us together, young and old. Bring us together, saint and sinner. Bring us together, every person in this place, God, whatever background, whatever past, Lord, and whatever future, wherever we are, God, help us to be a unified church, a being that is on this earth to present heaven to the rest of Concord today. God, I pray that you would use us, that you would prepare our hearts for what's next, to prepare our hearts for this next season. God, that you would line us up with who you are, Father, and that we would look like you in the earth. Lord, that we would speak like you in the earth, that we would act like you and walk like you in the earth, Father. Lord, let nothing come from us that does not represent you well. Lord, I pray that we would be people that honor you and honor your kingdom in everything that we do. Father, I pray that this vision would take root in our hearts. Lord, I pray that people, when they walk in, would experience the real love of Jesus. I pray that those who are under the sound of my voice, God, have experienced that real love. Lord, that you would help them to carry out this vision every day of their lives. It's not about a church. It's not about a ministry team. But, Lord, it's about a life. But it's about who we are and our DNA, God, and how we walk around in this earth, Lord. And then we show people what it really means about to be loved by a Jesus that came and died for them. God, I pray that right now, Father, you would just fill up the ground of our hearts and you would just plant seeds of your love inside of us, God, so that when we carry it, that we go different places and we walk and we run and we do the things that we do, Lord, that it would bear fruit and other people would see it in our lives, God, and it would change them and make them new. Not because it's us, but God, it's because of the, the one that we carry. Lord, help us to ever have our minds on you. God, that whatever programs we run, Lord, whatever things that we do, whatever we're reaching,
transformation toward. Father, that we would always have a focus that is all about you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this day. And I thank you for these people. And Lord, I pray that you would bring us together like never before. And that we would run and we would tackle this year, Father, with everything that we have. Lord, help us not to be average. Help us to be phenomenal. Help us to be awesome in your eyes, God. Help us to fulfill everything you've called us to. God, we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory this do your name. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap and a shout of praise in the house today. Before you leave today, I got something really cool for, for all these t-shirts you see up here. If you don't have a t-shirt on, we've got an Experience Real Love t-shirt for you to leave with today, okay? We've got all different sizes. They're setting up tables right now. They're trying to really hurry, and I'm trying to stall for them while they get set up. But before you leave today, I want you to make your way down here. We've got shirts for you. We're going to lay them out. You grab your size, and you're, you're free to go. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you this week.